Hey guys, Logan here. I have our multi-agent concierge demo open here, as you can see. Uh, you might have seen this. We published it a few months ago as a, an example of how to orchestrate multiple agents in a workflow. Uh, recently, I've refactored this entire thing to not only use the latest features that we've added to Llama Index in the past few months, but also to make this example more extendable, user-friendly, uh, and, and hackable for, for new users. <laughs> And while you could jump through this and read this readme and you know look at the source code and, and see how it works, you could try it out today. What I really wanna go through in this video is actually a walkthrough of how this system was built, starting from a single agent, like implementing the reasoning loop, extending that to adding human in the loop, and then finally extending that to have uh, multiple agents orchestrating together. And hopefully by the end of this, you'll have a better understanding of how you might implement this yourself. You'll have a better understanding of the code base in here, and hopefully you can better use this in projects that you are building today. So if we kind of take it back to a single agent uh, and what a single agent loop is typically doing, for example, if you use a React agent or function calling agent in LUM index, uh, this is what it's doing. So the human is giving some message to the system. Uh, the agent is taking in that message along with some tools and kind of generating a response. And so that response might trigger a tool call, it might not. If there are no tool calls, we could just exit the system and return back to the user. Uh, but if there are tool calls, we want to loop. So basically, we're gonna take that tool call, we're gonna call the tool, get the tool output, add it back to the chat history and kind of trigger the LLM again. And we're gonna keep doing that until there are no more tool calls and we can exit out of the system. And this is basically like the most basic, simple agent loop that you can implement. And this is going to be the basis of our multi-agent uh, example here. So I think, first of all, it might be interesting to walk through and implement this ourselves with LUM index workflows. Uh, so in this notebook here, I'm gonna walk through how you would implement it. I'm going to assume that you've like read a little bit of the documentation about workflows. I'm not going to dive into the specifics like granular uh, technical bits of like how you how you define this. I'm going to assume you kind of know this. Obviously, all the code is here. You can read it. Um, but yeah, let's let's dive through this. So when we talk about an agent and how you might configure it, there's like a few key things that define an agent, um, and I've kind of like distilled that into this pedantic object here. So we have an agent name, an agent description. Uh, which aren't used at the moment, but they're going to be useful in the future when we have multiple agents. Uh, we have the system prompt, which is like something that is defining how that agent should act. And then we have a list of tools that that agent has access to. And so using this pedantic object, we could kind of define our first uh, little agent using this agent config. So we could define a function that adds two numbers. We can use the function tool class from LUM index uh, to create a tool out of this. It's going to use the function name and the doc string to kind of define what that tool does. And then we can wrap this all into our agent config object. And now that we have this object, we need a workflow to, to use this and, and implement our agent loop. So to do this, basically, we're going to implement exactly this diagram. We're going to, you know, set up our chat history, call the LLM, parse out tool calls, call the tools if there are tool calls, or exit out of the workflow if there are no tool calls. And so kind of quickly browsing over this code, uh, we have our workflow, we have our setup step, which is just getting a bunch of input arguments. So we're allowing the user to pass in an agent config, user message, LLM, chat history, and some initial state that's injected into the system prompt as well. So here you can see we're setting that up, we're adding that to the context in the workflow, and then we are triggering our next event. So we're calling LM call event, which triggers this step. In this step, we actually do the, the, the function calling with the LLM. So we set up the system prompt here. We set up the LLM input, which is just a list of chat messages. We get our tools, and then we call our LLM with our tools and our chat history. Now in Lomindex, we actually have these low-level functions, for example, a chat with tools to allow you to implement this yourself. So this is going to pass the tools and the chat history through the LLM's API, whether it's Anthropic or OpenAI or, or Llama, and it's going to get a response back that may or may not have tool calls. 
So in the next step here, we're going to call this function to parse the tool calls and basically implement our loop here. So if there are no tool calls, we can exit out of the workflow, returning the stop event. If there are tool calls, we're going to fire off an event for every tool call. And this will allow us to execute tools concurrently, assuming that they have async implementations. So for every tool call, we're going to basically call the tool and get the output. Um, we do some extra error handling here, like if the LLM predicts a tool that doesn't exist, or if like an exception gets raised, uh, we add like proper details to that. And then finally, we return a kind of result event with basically a tool chat message that we're going to add to our chat history. And since we can fire off more than one tool call here, we have a step to aggregate the tool results. So using the workflow context, we can collect events, which basically what's happening here is this step's going to get triggered every time this event gets emitted. Uh, we're going to basically cache that in the context until we have enough tool call results or X tool call results. Um, once we have that required amount, this results will be a list of those events, and we can update our chat history and loop back to our LLM call again. So we're basically, we're looping back, calling the LLM with the updated chat history, and hopefully it's done calling event tools and, and exits. And so we can actually try out this workflow. We can set it up, uh, pass in a user message, ask it to add something. Uh, we can see that it's, it is adding those two numbers and calling the tool. Uh, since the chat history is managed outside of the workflow, we can manage it ourselves. Here, I'm just using a chat memory buffer to uh, basically have a sliding window over the chat history to manage that. And we can run it a second time. And due to the LLM system prompt, it's it's not going to answer this question because uh, it's only knows how to add two numbers together. And so that's that's our basic agent loop. And I think it's pretty like straightforward. Uh, it's not terribly complicated. I think the natural extension to this, and it is something that I see a lot of times in the community and in, in other projects that people are implementing, is that these tool calls are often doing like mission critical tasks. They're editing some state external to, to your system. They're writing some row to a SQL DB. They're updating some state variable. And you want, usually you want to be like really sure that that tool is doing what you want, uh, especially for like mission critical tasks. And so, it can feel like really natural to like want to involve like a human to approve that tool call essentially. Um, and that's exactly what we can do. We can mark tools as needing human approval uh, and involve like a human in the loop essentially. And so what that looks like is something like this. The, the same, same loop here is still here, but now we have this extra step of where if a tool needs approval, we can send it to the human to either approve it and then, and then call it and get the output or, or we can reject it and the agent can handle that rejection uh, in, a, in, the in the next loop, essentially. Implementing this in a workflow is, is going to be like pretty straightforward given our previous work that we just did. Um, the only thing that really changes here is we add something to our config object here. So basically providing a list of tool names that require human confirmation. So in this case, I'm saying the only tool that this agent has is add two numbers together. So I'm going to say that this requires human confirmation. And then in our workflow, we're going to add two new events. Basically, we need to be able to request like a tool to be approved, essentially. So this is going to get sent to, to the, the user of the workflow. And then the user of the workflow is going to respond back with a tool approved event. Uh, basically, yes or no, did I approve? If you didn't approve, you can attach some kind of like a response to inform why, um, and then that will get added to the chat history and we loop back again. And so in terms of like actual new steps in our workflow or new code, new logic, um, basically we just need to check if that tool name is part of the tools that require human confirmation. And if they do, we want to stream this event to the user so that they know that there's an event happening that needs their response. So you know, we could send out this tool request event, and then we need to rely on the user to provide back the tool approved event, which is handled by this function. Um, and basically, if it's approved, then okay, now we can emit our normal tool call event and tool calling happens normally. If it's not approved, we could say that technically the tool was called and we can give back either 
the the reason why it wasn't approved or some kind of default string. And that's that's the only addition to this to this entire example. We can go back um, down to here. We can run it. Now here, when we actually run the workflow, we'll need to check for if that tool request event is being emitted. If it's being emitted, you can implement your own logic uh, to handle that approval. Here, I'm just automatically approving. Oops. Here, I'm just automatically approving every every tool call. Essentially, um, you could try setting this to to false and and seeing what happens. Provide like a reason. See if the agent can figure it out. Um, so here we could see that like oh yeah like it needs to human approval. We approved it. Then we could finally call it. Uh, and get our results. And that's that's basically human in the loop. So we have our workflow, we have our basic agent agent loop, and we've gone back and added tools that need human approval. Now, the last the last piece here is adding in our multi-agent orchestration. So now we have basically multiple of these and we need to be able to like orchestrate between them and figure out like who should be handling certain requests at a certain time, uh, who should be responding, how do you transfer to other agents, all that, all that jazz. So now our diagram is getting a bit more complicated, but it's still like not that bad. You can see that this loop over here is, is relatively unchanged. Tools still need approval. We still have to give them back. Um, the main addition to this diagram is really the kind of concept of an active speaker or active agent. Um, so we, we need to decide, you know, is there an active speaker? If there's not an active speaker, then we need to give it to some process or agent that decides the next active speaker. Um, if there is an active speaker, then we could do our normal loop. Um, but the other addition here is that agents have the ability to request a transfer. So this will kind of clear the active speaker. We'll go back to the orchestrator and the orchestrator will decide the next speaker given the current chat history. There is also the case that the orchestrator can't assign a new speaker. Maybe none of the agents kind of fit what the user is asking for. In this case, we've added the ability for the orchestrator to respond directly back to the to the user. In this case, it might be asking for more context, or it might say like, "Hey, like nothing I have in my system can handle this." Yada yada yada. You could kind of customize uh, how this orchestrator acts with its system prompt. Now, if we go back to the workflow code, uh, now it's 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 getting it's getting a bit it's getting a bit longer. But hopefully, we've built up to this that it's not that scary. Um, obviously, our agent config still the exact same. Um, we don't need to change anything here. When we're setting up our agents, though, now that we have a multi-agent system, we're going to need more than one agent. Uh, so here, I've added a new agent to multiply two numbers together. Uh, this this one does not require human approval to multiply numbers. That's a safe operation. So left that out. So these are our two agents. And now we need the workflow to actually orchestrate between these agents. And this this code that I'm about to go through is like mostly a copy of like what's in the repo. So feel free to reference that as well. Um, in addition to adding an extra agent, we also need some way for an agent to transfer to another one. So the idea here is that we can inject a tool to our agents that can request a transfer. And basically this will like route us back to the orchestrator. And then the orchestrator can then select which agent it should be routing to. So here, these functions don't do anything. They're mainly there for us to like help us decide like where to route in the workflow essentially. So we set up these two two functions and we'll and we'll use these later on. So back to our workflow definition, it's going to be mostly the same, but now we're going to need to keep track of an active speaker and we're going to implement like an orchestrator. So here I've defined some sort of basic orchestration prompt. It has all the information about the agents that are available. It will have we, if you remember, we have that like global state that we're passing around. It'll have that access to that as well to help it decide what needs to happen next. And we can go through here. The setup is largely the same, taking in stuff. By default, we're going to set the active speaker to like no active speaker. And we can see here that like if there is no active speaker, um, we're going to need to return the orchestrator event. Otherwise, we can go and, and call the active speaker. 
In terms of calling the Active Speaker, this is all the same as our previous workflow. The only difference here is now we're injecting this request transfer tool. So if that tool gets called, we want to clear the Active Speaker and route back to the orchestrator. That's the only addition here. Handling tool approval is the same. Handling tool calls is the same. <coughs> Aggregating our tool results is the same. And then lastly here, we have our, our new orchestrator step, which is basically taking our agent configs and our chat history, uh, organizing our agent configs into a handy little string, uh, getting the user state, and kind of formatting this orchestrator prompt that we saw earlier as the system prompt. We're giving this, this LLM a single tool, which is deciding which, which agent to transfer to, to. It may or may not call this tool. That's fine. We can handle that. So we could call this function, get the tool calls. If there are no tool calls, uh, we can return a stop event and exit the workflow uh, and return back you know, whatever it said back to the user. Uh, and if there was tool calls, that means we're transferring it somewhere. So we can parse out the agent name that it selected, set that as the active speaker, and then, and then actually call the active speaker to respond to the user. In terms of using this, it's going to look very similar as well. Uh, now we pass in a list of agent configs. Uh, we can do the same approval. What for tool calls, for, exa for example, we're gonna be approving this plus addition uh, tool call. We can manage our chat history as we did before. Uh, we could call it again with this time a multiplication question. And so what's gonna happen here is that the addition agent is going to see that, oh, I can't handle this request. I need to request a transfer. The orchestrator is like, okay, this needs to go to the multiplication agent. And then finally the multiplica multiplication agent can respond and, and call the, the multiplication tool and give us, give us back a response. And then lastly, since I gave the orchestrator more of like a general system prompt, it can respond to anything. When I ask it what the capital of Canada is, the orchestrator actually responds and says the capital of Canada is Ottawa. You can see that the multiplication agent requested a transfer, then the orchestrator responded directly. And that's, we've reached the end. This is, this is the multi-agent workflow with human in the loop. Now, if you look at the code base in the repo, the one thing I kind of omitted from this video was defining our function tool class that includes the workflow context. I, you can take a look at the file, file utils.py in the repo, but basically all this does is copies the function tool class and then allows you to like pass in the workflow context to the functions, but then omits that from the schema of the tool. So basically like when the LLM sees the schema for the tool, it doesn't know that context is being passed in. It doesn't have to like try to like write a context object to pass in. It won't confuse it. Uh, and that's like the main improvement there. So it could be the case that your tools need some sort of like access to the global state essentially. And so that's why that's there. And so you can take a look at the repo, use that as your starting point, hack it, build something with it. And we're excited to see what people use with this. Thanks.